Hi everyone, David here. So today I'm going to show you how to write a Hello World program in x86 Assembler. To get started, you need an editor. I am using Emacs here and you need some sort of Unix prompt. And I'm using here a Vagrant. So that is a virtual image for a Linux system. And you can download this image by just looking at the description of the video. We are going to use a assembler, a assembler program that is translating the assembler code down to machine code. So assembler code is something that is easy for us human beings to, to read, but it, it's very close to the machine code that is the encoding that the processor can actually execute. For the operating system to be able to start the program, it needs to know where to go. It needs to have an address. This address, instead of writing the address in the assembly program, we use a label. That label is called start, which is the start label of a program. You need to state that this label is available to the outside world. And that you do by writing global and, and then the symbol start. Just add a system call, sys call, that will terminate the program. So we'll just start the program and then terminate it. And there is a special code for termination, RAX and 60. We use this instruction, that is the instructions uh, of x86. And this instruction is called move. And that is moving a value into a register. So we'll come back later in, in the next um, video about what, what kind of registers we have. But let's just assume that there is one register called RAX, that is 64 bits. And we give it the value 60. And this is the special code for exit. And, and then there is another register which is given value 3, which means, or it could be any value, 0, uh, for example, or, or 5. This is the actual exit code. So let's, let's run this. And then we need to then assemble this. It's, it's kind of compiling it, but we often say that we assemble it when you go from assembler down to machine code. The assembler that we use is called NASP, and we have to specify what kind of, of format are we generating. And this is called FELF64. And then we say that we are going to use this empty.asp. So we're going to assemble this file. If we do that, it should work. And then we can look here. We have two files. We have the empty.asp, and then we have an object file. So this is an object file. We cannot execute an object file. We have to link it. If you have several objects file, you can link these object files together. There is one command called LD that is linking. So now we'll do then linking this object file and then just create an executable. So we can do this empty.o. And then if we write that, what happens then is that it creates an executable a.out. We could have written empty.o and then uh, give it a name like empty. Let's run this program. We do like this and nothing happens. It's because we just exited. But the thing is that it actually returns a return code. And in a Unix prompt, you can print out what was the exit code of the last program that you executed. And you do that by writing echo followed by dollar question mark. And here we see that the, this program returned five. And this is because we had a number five there. And if we write ls again, this is another program, and now we do echo, we get code zero because the ls command returns zero. So let's try, try to just change here and then run again nas, linking, empty, and then we do echo. Three, we got number three. All right, so this was the... Uh, basic empty program but we are going to do a classic hello world and then we have, we have to actually write out hello world let's create another program and let's call that program hello dot asp and now we are not going to use a syscall but in, instead we are going to use what's called libc so we are going to link our assembly program with the C compiler and the basic functions. And that means that you, we can now invoke many of the basic libraries that are available in libc, uh, such as printing and so forth. libc will actually have the start label that we looked at before. The operation will start this start label and then libc 
will call the main function. And then we have to have this uh, global label. Main. We want to write out the text, hello world. We cannot add the string to a instruction. Instead, we have to declare this as data that is stored inside, inside the binary. And, and to do that, we need to refer to it in some way. So we, we create another label. We call that message, for example. And then after that, we have to declare the actual message. To do that, we say, what kind of data are we storing? By saying DB is a directive that means that we will declare bytes. And then we can just write the string. So like, hello world. And then a ending here. And this ending here means that it's the last byte is a zero byte. And this ending is, is zero because C library functions ends with a zero byte. So you can mix of writing bytes using the string format and a normal byte. Now we want to print. We do that by using a command called call puts. So call is an instruction that is doing a function call and we are calling a function called puts. And this puts um, is available in the standard library. You can look it up on the web. So we need to explain to the rest of the world that this label puts is available somewhere else outside this file. And you do that by writing extern, extern and say puts is external to this file. So puts takes as argument a pointer to the actual message. So we need to write that and the argument is put in a register called RDI. We'll tell you later on why it's RDI, but let's just say that we're using RDI now. RDI and the pointer is available by just stating the label. So by writing a, a label, we get the address for that label. So the, the assembler would actually change this into an address. So we just write message like that. And then we'll get a, a pointer to the first byte here. So it will point to the byte of H. Now, if we run this, puts will take this pointer from message, go there and print out this string. But it's one thing is missing. We need to also terminate the program. And we do that by adding the instruction return that returns and we also want to give the arrow code or the exit code. And you do that by placing it into RAX. And let's give the exit code zero. So this is the hello world program. Let's save it, then try to compile it. And again, we go do use NASP 1264. And then we just write hello dot asp worked but now we cannot link it with uh, with ld so it's easier to use gcc to also do the linking so gcc is all, both a c compiler but it also can do directly the linking and because then it will also add as uh, libc to be able to for example call this puts so that the, it's available we have to go do this no pi, which is uh, necessary in the special case when you're uh, linking uh, assembler files here in, on Linux. And then we write hello, and then o. Dot, dot out, and we can run it, and it says hello world. And we can also write echo here, and then like this, and we see that we it, this hello world returned a uh, return code zero. So that's it for today. Uh, if you find this interesting, uh, please uh, check out the other videos in this uh, playlist about low-level programming. Thank you.